Hello, wonderful artists of Morgandale. Um, so for this week's project, we are going to build on last week's project, which was the Getting to Know You collage. Um, so for this week, we're going to continue to explore how we can express or communicate visually something about ourselves. So the perfect artist to look at in regards to self-portraits is Frida Kahlo. And it's also Hispanic Heritage Month, and she is from Coyoacan, Mexico. Um, and a lot of you probably know Frida Kahlo. She is really, really famous and well-known because people relate to her. She had good days and she had bad days, and a lot of that was reflected in her artwork. And so I'm going to share a little bit of this book with you um, because I love reading, as you all know by now, I think, but also because it gives a lot of good background about her and it shows some of her actual paintings. So you get a little bit of art history with this too. Um, so Frida was an artist who lived in sunny Mexico. Unlike many artists whose work you might see in a gallery, Frida did not go to art school. She was self-taught, okay? So um, when she was at home, she often dreamed of fantastical scenes and turned them into magical paintings. Um, and I'm going to just give you a little close-up because this book is really cool. It shows some of her actual paintings. And this is um, a copy of an actual painting that she created. Um, that was surreal, something that um, is not quite of this world. It couldn't probably really happen. Frida liked to paint lots of outfits or versions of herself in the same picture. She did this to show what it was like to feel like lots of different people all rolled up into one body. Sometimes she felt like she was a little child and sometimes she felt like she was a grown-up. I bet we all have days, right, where we feel um, a little bit different than the last day. When Frida was a child, she had an illness called polio, and then she had a terrible bus accident. This meant lots of time recovering in bed, which was very boring. To cheer her up, her father made her a special easel. It meant she could paint while lying down. So she had lots of illnesses, illnesses in her life, and so she became used to painting this way. And so here you can see that she's lying in bed painting. And then right here, that is an actual painting that Frida created. I'm gonna go through a few pages here. We're not gonna read the whole book, just some excerpts. Sometimes Frida felt on top of the world. When she felt like this, her paintings would be filled with many colors and Mexican plants from her garden. But sometimes she felt low and frustrated that one of her legs was always more tired than the other. When she felt like this, her pictures were filled with gloomy colors. Sometimes she felt happy and sad at the same time. I know I felt that way too. Um, maybe you're at a party and you're having a good time, but then you remember that maybe you're missing somebody, right? So sometimes we can feel um, happy and sad at the same time, just like Frida. And I think that's why a lot of people really like her because we can sort of see ourselves in her artwork. Um, and so when she felt both happy and sad, her paintings were filled with all sorts of colors. And this is an actual painting that Frida created. Um, so let's move forward. She was actually married to a very famous Mexican muralist, Diego Rivera. Um, and during their lifetime together, he was more well-known, but I think now Frida is probably a little more famous than Diego. But this is a painting up here that Frida created of them featuring their wedding day. So a lot of her work sort of tells a story, and she often includes, I don't think you can see it, it's very small, but she often included banners that told a little story. She used words, she would write right on her paintings to kind of further explain what was happening in the painting. Um, so let's just move on a little bit. Although her paintings had parts that were realistic, people often said they looked like they were scenes from dreams or nightmares. And again, that's where we get that word surreal. This annoyed Frida who would say, I never paint dreams, I paint my own reality. Often her work is called symbolism because it's filled with symbols or objects that have meanings. 
right? Like a symbol that we're all familiar with is a heart. We can kind of convey um, or understand that a heart often means love, right? Um, but this right here is one of Frida's very famous paintings. This uh, of the wounded deer. And a lot of people speculate that she was feeling attacked or hunted. Um, and it's how you would feel if you were um, a deer that was being hunted. That's kind of how she felt. So you can almost get a good idea of what she's feeling, right? Um, so I just wanted to show you this other page. She was the first Mexican artist to have her artwork shown in the Louvre, which is a world famous museum in Paris, France. So here's the Eiffel Tower. Um, she was the first Mexican artist to have her artwork in the Louvre, which is really cool. Um, and this is the painting that the Louvre purchased. I'm gonna pull that up for you to see. Again, that's a self-portrait of Frida. She did a lot of self-portraits and reflected on her life and her artwork. Um, and she made a lot of her paintings in the Blue House in Coyoacan, Mexico. And that Blue House where she lived and created is now a museum. People travel from all over to visit. And in case you're wondering why I'm wearing this flower headband, it's because she often did. Um, she was very colorful and um, often had flowers in her hair as well. And she had many pets like monkeys and deer and cats and birds and dogs, which are often featured in her work as well. So my friends, um, your job this week is to create your own self-portrait. We are kind of keeping in line with last week's project, as I mentioned, um, where you are exploring how to represent yourself visually. And this week, you are going to take a note from Frida Kahlo. Traditionally, self-portraits feature like the head, neck, and shoulders. So go for that, don't get too big. Um, try to get the head, neck, and shoulders. But if you really feel like you can communicate more with your whole body or maybe your hands featured, that's fine too. Um, I don't wanna stifle your creativity, but add the background, right? You're gonna need kind of the same materials that um, you would just need probably for regular classroom paper. You'll need pencil, eraser. Um, you will need your coloring materials of choice, whether that's colored pencils, crayons, markers, it should be colored in, okay? You're gonna think about what colors you wanna use in your self-portrait. Um, do you want bright colors? Do you want subdued colors? So you can add words too, just like Frida added words in her uh, painting. Sometimes she explained what was going on. You can do that as well. Think about where you're at right now in your life and how you can reflect and show others visually something about you. So we are learning how to share with others through our artwork something about ourselves. So do your best to draw yourself. You may have to look in a mirror, um, but you don't have to either. If you feel like you know who you are without looking in a mirror and just want to sort of um, express what you look like without being realistic, that is fine too, okay? Um, so we are going to be uploading these into our Google Classroom assignment area. Um, there is a little paper clip that says upload and that is where you are going to be able to find um, the picture you take with your Chromebook of your artwork. And I know we went over this in our uh, meetings, but for those of you who are able to get to our meetings, um, so you will be going to take pictures of your artwork with your Chromebook, then you go to assignment, upload, click that little paper clip icon, and then you're prompted to choose a file and you'll be able to find that photo that you took with your Chromebook. And to find your camera on your Chromebook, you go to launcher. You might need to have a grown up help you or an older sibling, depending on how old you are. And if you are an older sibling, 
please help younger siblings as well. But you go to that little circle on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. That is your launcher. And you will click that, and that should show you an icon of a camera. And you will you, you'll open that, and that's how you take a picture. Um, also, you can find your camera by looking in the search bar of, um, like, your... your um, Google search bar that you have that should bring up your camera um, as well. But please, as always, feel free to put questions in the stream of our Google Classroom or you can send me a private message on Google Classroom as well. Thank you so much, everybody, and have fun with this. Get um, as creative as you can. I look forward to seeing the beautiful artwork that you will all make. All right, I will see you in our art. Um, office hours this week. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.